for um, deserts really and not really experience beating and no experience rape for desert. Now after desert I experience beating. But for that desert, nobody beats me. The only person when they won't beat me, the person when demand for money, I not get. Now only um, the clothes and the things when I carry, I bring her out strong. So the guy was like, he's a lie, it's gone and all of that. So um, we had to cooperate and carry our bag, anything you see inside take. So he checked and then you know, out of annoyance, just walked away and all of that. But for rape, I didn't actually experience that. Tell us about the beating experience where you get. Okay, the beating experience was after I had gotten to Libya. They were trying to load people in a vehicle. So I was feeling hot and the, the vehicle was filled up. It's a big vehicle filled up with people and then they still covered it with something and then put watermelon on top. So I was feeling hot. I had to bring out my head like so I can at least receive air. Then the Arab man, I don't know, he was saying something I didn't actually hear him. I don't, I didn't know he was talking to me. So he brought something and used to hit my head. So when he hit me, I was like, why? Then I got another one. I was trying to like, you are hitting me, you are hitting me. He now hit me and then covered that. And that was when I knew he was saying, but well, I was already injured, I was bleeding. But he didn't care about the bleeding. He just wanted to cover that thing. And so that was the beating I got as at um, the time I got to Libya. Aside that, I didn't really, I didn't get, the only experience I would have had in the issue of men was the night before I got to Suprata. We were all lying down, guys, girls, you know. Somebody is Sudanese, he doesn't speak English. So he came to where I was lying and then he lifted my wrapper and brought out five dinner, which will say 500 Nigerian Naira, and was like. So I was angry, five dinner. You need a crease. <laughs> you need a crease from that scream. Everyone woke up. They were like, what did it happen, what did it happen? You know, the Nigerian guys and then one Ghanaian. The Ghanaian was actually my friend. So the guy was like, Chilean, you know, they don't speak their own English. They, there is a way they say, Chilean, waiting. I said, that guy came with five dinner and he's asking me. So the guy was angry. They now, the thing brought an uproar. So they went to the guy and these sisters don't touch. So he was like, he's sorry that he just felt I would. So that was the only experience I would have had. Maybe if I had accepted for five dinner, but. Another one when I get when make me no sin at trafficking that the Igbo man when I abduct us when buy us. The man just tell us say uh, when I don't come home. so we had to pay three three hundred thousand to the bank. Now their business when they do for them be that. What kind of business? So it's trafficking. Just to buy you. Buy buy and sell. Mm -hmm. Or if nobody comes to rescue you, maybe you are unable to pay the amount they asked for. Because since he asked for three 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 hundred thousand, that evening he told us with a gunshot that if Nobody comes to pick us up for the girls, Olosho. For the guys, Nano son, I don't taban. As you've come, you've come. If nobody sets you free, it's either you pay the money or you die here. So for the girls, I'm going to use you guys for prostitution. And he had a huge number of girls already prostituting in that area. So um, my brother called and then they sent our own money and they, they moved us from there to Saba and then from Saba to Suprata. So it was when I got to Suprata that I saw the sea, was hearing the sound, I just came out and I, I discovered, wow. So water is also involved. We are crossing over through um, this means. So they said some people that we met there because of God, a lot of people. So I said, ah, I've been here, they've not pushed me. Ah, they pushed before, they caught us and they brought us back home. You know? So I started discussing with some of them how was the pushing? Somebody said, eh, I know Martin, um, I just boat. They put people inside boats, push the boat. I said, eh, boat. So then I remember that, yes, that lady explained that it was going to be water and then a boat. So that was it.
So when you reach there, you enter the boat? Okay, so there was one in Suprata. So at the time we got to Suprata. So we waited for about a month and some days, no pushing. The boat that was pushed about two weeks before I was arrested, that boat did not get there. But the people in the camp, they called and said the boat arrived. But unluckily for those guys, they were arrested and thrown in detention. So um, someone among them had to call someone in camp to inform that don't accept pushing no because we they prison somewhere so we're like okay since there's no pushing so my connection man he suggested okay there's no pushing you guys should just um, come over to the town so i was actually planning that when we were arrested so when we were arrested they took us from that place to terry uh, to Gavian first we had Girian for some days. From Girian, they moved us to Terimata. That's in Tripoli. So I was in Tripoli for about three months in prison. The prison life was, was not sweet at all because um, no food. If they cook at all, it's going to be half done rice. You know, they, they cook basically when um, UN staffs or EU want to visit the camp. So um, when they cook, I don't know how they mix that. There is a way they mix it. I don't know. I can't even tell the ingredients in the food. You know. But after eating, I will have sore throat. So sometimes I just decide to starve myself. I don't even eat because after eating, I'll get sick. What's the need? And then sometimes they prepare um, macaroni. That macaroni, anything they prepare will sit five to a plate. Sometimes if you don't come out on time, you will not get anything. But if you come out on time, you get the macaroni. Macaroni is something you cannot even give to your dog. They will just prepare it, mix whatever they mix, and then for you to survive, you have to eat. And then for water, because Libya water is not actually good, it's salty. So we don't have the choice. When you are thirsty, you still take from that salty water to drink. And then for baiting, it was not easy. I play no water to bait sometimes. Then sometimes once in a while, and it was cold. So it was not easy for us. And they pretended like we're safe. Whenever the UN staffs come, they tell us to say that we are fine. We don't want to go. And you don't have a choice because if you say you want to go, the moment those um, UN staffs are gone, they start punishing us. They might lock up the place throughout the day. Nobody would come to give us food or talk to us or anything. And then the next day, they might extend the punishment. So until a particular day, it was actually a Nigerian guy that came to make the announcement. That Arabu said people are coming. And those ones that are coming, if they come, we should lie that we are fine. I told them I'm not lying anymore. These people want to kill somebody. Let them even kill. Why is it that they are telling us to keep lying? So luckily for us, one Nigerian man came with those people. So when the Nigerian man asked, are you fine? We said no. Now they are not hearing us. They are not understanding. We told him no, we are not fine. So the man said, who wants to go? Those ones who actually wanted to go came to one side and then they took down our names. And they said, OK, they are going to prepare tickets for those who actually wanted to go. So my ticket took about an extra two weeks because immediately they took that data. My sister's tickets, the two sisters I came with, their own came out. And then some of the friends I already had there, their own, their own two came out while That's I was still there. Idea. Yes. So about um, two weeks later, after they've gone, though before they left, I, I gave them my mom's address to some of them that could be able to reach my, my mom to tell her that I'm in prison, do I'm fine, I'll, I, I don't want her to worry. So um, as at the time I, I, my own ticket came back, I got back to Nigeria. When I called her, she said, with the news she heard, she already thought something had happened. So that was it. So getting back to Nigeria, tell us life in Nigeria now. OK, 
Okay, so um, my coming back to Nigeria has not really been easy. I want to be honest now. Because um, as at the time I came back, I thought, place your hand here, place your hand here, everything will be okay. It has not been easy. It's, it's, it got to the point that at some point I locked myself up and start crying. Because sometimes I even wish, I wish I even tasted the Europe, I wish I even, I even got there. At least I know one thing or the other I, I might be able to. Okay, just like um, about a few weeks ago, my son was sick. So uh, my mom called me that uh, my son is sick. And though she encouraged me, just she wants to inform me. But I knew informing me means I have to do something. He has never been sick. That's the truth. He's always strong. So for him to have been admitted, that means something is really wrong. I looked around, tried to borrow, no way. No. My younger brother helped out with the little he could. I was confused. I, I cried. There's no one to talk to, that's the worst. Who can you actually plead with to assist? Moreover, people see it like nobody sent you. Did anybody ask you to get pregnant? So why are you bothering them with your life? So, and I like this doing, at least you are doing something that you can independently on your own take care of things. I am not someone that likes disturbing people. I find it like, but I, we really sometimes should speak out because that period was hell for me. A few days later, again, they called that he's having some rash on his body, nothing to treat him with. And then, as a January as well, I had this course I applied for that I wanted to do. That one really hurt me because um, three months later, I got notification on my mail that the course was already expired. I could not do it anymore. And this wasn't actually too expensive. It was like 17,000 plus. So I felt really bad that, okay, now I want to do something for myself and that I can't start from, you know, I really can't do anything. It's really um, hurting me that I can't um, do something for myself at this point. I really can't come out. I want to at least upgrading my academics. That's the first thing because there's no, I can't, the places I submitted CV, I don't get feedback because your academics is not worth it. No one would, no one would employ you. So it hurts me after four years of going through school, you can't even get employed because you're, you didn't graduate. So it hurts. And I want to upgrade. I really want to upgrade, but no way to. So that's the situation. I even try to see whether if you go any training, if he train you on handwork. Okay, so I've really not tried any skills yet. Um, I got information from one returnee as well that we are doing this um, advocacy together. So the guy told me as at last week there was one that um, we were supposed to go for, but we heard from the man too. That was um, on Tuesday because we were at Unilag on Tuesday. So we heard from the man that the returnees, about three people already went there, that each person is going to pay about, uh, he said 250,000, depending on the skill. So someone that just came back and you don't have a job and you're asking for 250,000, so that one, I've already made up my mind. I don't think that one would work. Now, with all you don't, like with you talk now, with all the struggles in Nigeria, and even all you don't tell us of things where you go through, even getting into Libya, and then even trying to cross over to Europe. If person come meet you now, tell you, say, they won't carry you go to Europe, you go agree? Um, with, because, say, I be advocate, because waiting I don't suffer, don't open my eye. I know, say, so many agents, they won't want carry people come out to, but I know go fit because they are on a land, they might lie to you, it's going to be by air and you're going to be secure, but you will not get the protection. So I know go fit travel again in that means. But if not legit one, that can give me what I, I, I need because the only travel that 
I'm looking up to. It's not just the um, financial freedom that I'm seeking in Nigeria, but at least I want to academically, I want to upgrade academically. I'm not where I want to be. Give your advice to Nigerians where they out there, where they go through some of the struggles where they go through, where they talk, say, ah, I need to come up for Nigeria. I need to go for greener pastures. The first thing, uh, when I they always tell Nigerians, we know say struggle they here, say you know easy. But may everybody they careful because who die, they know they remember them. That road not be waiting person go try. We know they talk, say make people no travel, but please if you want to actually travel, ensure that you have the right documents. And if you know you cannot afford it, be doing what you're doing with trust that somehow God will remember us and will help us out. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.